Along with a new toy comes a new urge to take it apart. So that's the 5G Telstra modem. It's made by Arcadian. Uh, to open this up, what we need to do is remove the four rubberized feet and then undo the four Phillips head screws. Then the front or the bottom of this will come off uh, with this small clip hidden behind the front there. Just pulling that out seems to work. Next, we can pull the modem out of the shell. Next, we can take off the back plate. Take the back plate off. We need to take off these from around the antenna connectors. Um, so just take those two off. And then there's one screw. So for reference, it's just above the USB port on the inside here. One screw. Take that out. Allows this to come out freely. And um, that's as much as I've ripped, as I've uh, torn this down. So the things I've noticed so far is I think we've got a connector here where I can solder on a serial console. Let's have a look at the modem booting up. I think. I've not done any testing, it just looks like one. Um, Mode is made up of two boards sandwiched together and a lot of heat sinks. So it must be expected to generate a bit of heat. Um, my assumption is this board on this side is the 4G, 5G component. And this board on this side is the more standard router components like the um, switch and the actual processor and stuff. I, I believe we're under the bigger heat sink here. Um, having a look at the, the main thing I want to look at with this was the antennas. So there's two sets of antennas. There's the, uh, LTE, like the 4G, the 5G antennas, and then there's the Wi-Fi antennas. So I don't care about the Wi-Fi antennas. The Wi-Fi is turned off in this anyway. I want to improve the signal on the, um, 5G. So all of these antennas that look like this, uh, they're for the Wi-Fi. So as far as I can tell, I'm, I'm making some assumptions here because I don't know all that much about RF. Um, but on this board, on the board on this side, there's one, two, three, four connectors and they've got white wires and they all go to very similar looking boards. So I think they're all the uh, Wi-Fi antennas. The other side has got gray connectors and these are um, to, these are connected also to the external antenna jacks here. So I'm assuming that all this is the um, cellular side. So what we have is connector zero here, which connects to this front antenna. It also connects to this bottom jack. We have antenna number two, can we see this in here? So number two isn't populated. Um, there's a place where uh, like a connector would be, but there's nothing populated there for number two. There's also nothing there for number three. Sorry, I skipped one because that was zero. Um, one, antenna number one is plugged in here. That goes to this one up here on the top. Um, so that's zero, one, two and three aren't populated. Four has this black wire that goes over to a connector here, which then comes out here as four and also goes to the jack. So this jack here, the top one is antenna four there. Uh, then we've got number five, number five, goes to this board here on the back. So antenna number five is very small. It's the smallest one uh, and it's facing uh, behind the modem. Then number six goes over to this side. It's orientated diagonally. Um, and then number seven comes up here on the front. So the front of the modem, so the, the main thing I've noticed is um, 
5G, incredibly directional. And it doesn't matter if I'm using this modem, if I'm using my iPhone. Um, you can have good signal, but there is a huge difference in speed, like hundreds of megabits per second. Huge difference in speed, um, say, just by moving, like di you know, directing things. Um, I noticed, as an example, with my iPhone in the car, I had, say, two, three hundred megasecond when I could, I could very clearly see the tower. I drive forward 10, 20 meters, and all of a sudden it's gone up to like 600 meg, 700 megasecond. Um, so very directional. Now, I've noticed with this, pointing it out my window towards the phone tower, um, that this is very directional. And the antennas that I've noticed the most, because I tried this facing out the window in every orientation I could think of on its sides, um, each direction, like kind of angle it, I tried. And for me, I, I, I made the assumption before I took this out of its shell that all the antennas were at the front and they're not. So I don't know if it's only using some of the antennas for most of the um, stuff. I, I don't know enough about this. But what I do know is um, the front, the antennas on the front, the ones that I must be using the most with this facing out the window is antenna zero and antenna seven. Because everything else is really facing in another direction. So seven does not have a corresponding connector on the back, but zero does. So zero is the bottom one here. Now there's the antenna on the top that's connected to number one. There is no rear port for that. Um, there's number four here on, on this side is connected to that port there. Now when I say it's connected to the port there, what I mean is that the internal antennas are connected in line with the port. They don't get disabled when you put an external antenna in. So I had assumed that either there'd be separate traces from these into um, the board somewhere and there would be some kind of soft switch where through software or just through general programming on how it's supposed to work it would monitor maybe the signal and use the external antenna connections if they were present. But I don't think that's the case because the traces go, uh, as an example, with this one here. I um, don't know how well that's going to focus, but looks like there's a trace that comes out, comes across the board here. It connects to this. So of these pins, this middle one here, this has continuity to here. Now, this always has continuity to here. It doesn't matter if I put a, a a connector in or not, there's always continuity between there and there. These pins here connect to the center pin in this, and they also go down to this connector, which then goes to the antenna. If I screw in a connector there, and I check continuity between that antenna and the internal one, there is continuity there. Um, so this does not get cut off in any way from the internal antenna. Uh, so when you connect this up, it doesn't separate the connection between these two. And when you um, connect it on there, there's no way for the modem itself to know that the external jack's being used instead of the internal jack. Now, there's, there's maybe two questions I have that I'm not sure about with this. One is, there are two antenna points here that don't have connectors on them. So I do wonder if I were to solder a connector on there and I think that there should be a resistor or something. Just There's no way you're going to be able to see this on camera. But it goes from this point here, goes down to a trace. Then there's pads where I think a resistor is meant to go. And then it goes down to the, um, well, under the heatsink. I do wonder if I was to solder something here and bridge that connector down there, if I would be able to do anything with that, if that would give me any extra signal. And the other thing I'm wondering is what would happen if I pop all of these off and put little fly leads on that would then, I could then stick out of the bo uh, body of the modem and put all the external antennas on. Because that's what I'm thinking of, of actually trying. Um, 
So if I do want to do that, these two are already connected. So it would just be one, two, three, four more extra. And then with that too, I don't know, I don't understand much about RF. So I don't know what happens with all of these. I'm assuming it's for MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. I don't know if some of these antennas are just transmit and some are just receive, or if they're all transmit and receive. Um, what I have noticed though is some of the antennas are the same as others. So uh, antenna zero, which is the bottom connector here, which must be one of the most important ones or else why would you have the connector on the back? That is a bigger antenna. It's the biggest one out of all of them. It's the same size and shape and, and everything as the top antenna, number one. So this is separated. Uh, there is no external jack for this. Then antenna number uh, two and three, as I said, aren't connected. So then number four is the top one here. And number four is a smaller antenna. Number four happens to be the same size and shape antenna as number six, which is on the diagonal angle there, and number seven, which, oh no, it's a bit hard to see. Sorry, seven, seven's here. Uh, so seven's on the front. So seven, six, and four appear to be the same type of antenna, so I assume they do the same frequency. I assume the different sizes are for different frequencies. Again, I don't know much. Um, now, the only one I've missed out on is antenna five, and I find antenna five to be a little odd because there is no other antenna like it anywhere in this. Antenna five is this little one at the back. So um, that faces out the back of the modem. I, again, I don't know much. If I was to make an assumption that the size of the antenna impacts, or like is to, if the size of the antenna has something to do with the frequency, then I would have to assume that this one here is a lower frequency. So I don't know, maybe like the 5G at 850 megahertz. Again, don't know, complete guessing. I don't know any of this stuff. Uh, and then these bigger ones are probably the main 3.6 gigahertz antennas there and there. Uh, again, total assumptions. But yeah, I don't know if maybe the bigger ones are transmit and the smaller ones are receive or the other way around. I, I have no idea. All I know is if I was to get a MIMO antenna that had two antenna leads to put on the roof, it would connect to two jacks. And those two jacks would be one big antenna and one small antenna. So if I was to get another one of those antennas and connect it on the inside here to this top one and maybe six or, or seven, would that work? Or can I get like a six-way MIMO that has six leads for all of these? I, I don't know. Also, what would happen? I live uh, it basically in between two towers. What would happen if uh, I had one antenna on one side of the house facing one tower and one on the other facing the other tower? I've got no idea. So there might be things for me to try or at least Google to see what would happen. Um, so the next step for me with this, because I don't want to break it, I can pull it apart more, but I don't see a need to. I don't know what I'd really get out of doing that. So my next thing with this is I will possibly get an external antenna and some fly leads and test removing some of the internal antennas, swapping them out completely for just external and see which one gives me the most gain or, or if getting two sets of them gives me more of a gain. Uh, the other thing I do want to do is, and I think I might do this tonight even, is uh, solder on uh, serial connection to there and see if I can see this thing booting up like I have with previous modems in the past. So tell me what you think. I am assuming someone out there knows a lot more about this than I do. Maybe you can shed some light on 
what the sizes of the antennas mean or why antenna two and three don't have any connection and why that's fine.